Moses did everything just as the Lord commanded him. Moses did everything that the Lord commanded him to do. And this phrase is repeated again and again and again and again. When something is repeated, does that mean it's important or it's not? It's very important. Moses did everything that the Lord commanded him to do. He built the, the tabernacle. He anointed all the furnitures. He anointed the priests. He washed them. He clothed them. He did everything God commanded him to do. What is the key here? I believe God is calling us to become aware of how pure our obedience to God's word is today. The question for us is not just to say, I obey you, God, but the reality of our choices each day. How pure is our obedience to God's word? When God's word says in Acts 2.38, repent and let every one of you be, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. How much of this do you believe and how much of this are you going to submit under? Well, Pastor, I don't know if I can be baptized because I just don't feel worthy. Then you have not received the grace of forgiveness. Well, Pastor, I don't agree uh, with what God is saying here. I think I have a better idea. Can I be half baptized? Can you just dunk me like halfway and then I, and I'll be okay with that? That's my idea. And do you think God will be okay with that idea? And I'm not being <laughs> negative or mean, but we're a people of the book. I don't make stuff up. It comes from the text. Moses did everything that the Lord commanded him to do. So we, as a people of the book, as a people of Scripture, we obey fully, submitted and surrendered to God's will. When God says, bring in your tithes and offerings to the house of God, it's not my idea. It's God's idea. When God says, Put all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. It's not my idea, because his shoulders are broad enough to carry all of your burdens and cares and worries. Come to me, Jesus says, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest for your souls. How pure is our obedience to God this morning? Well, our obedience to God will be as pure as much as you believe in him and put your faith in him. If your faith is 100%, then your obedience will be 100%. If you trust him 50%, then your obedience will probably be at a 50% mark. Does that make sense? If you trust him 1%, then your obedience will be at the 1% marker. But when we trust him fully, not only with our lives, with the lives of our family members, with the lives of those around us, with the people in this country, with the people of the nations. When we trust God fully, guess what? Our obedience will be 100%. Pure before God. How pure is your obedience to God today? How pure is it? If you're praying for something, let's say we're praying for I don't know. A breakthrough in your job. Okay. Let's pray for that. Okay. Let's pray for a reconciled relationship because your relationship with somebody that you love is very, very strained. If you're praying for financial freedom, if you're praying for a new life to be born in your family, obviously you would do anything to accomplish these desires. Correct? Because you want that spiritual breakthrough, you want that new life, and you want reconciliation and harmony and peace. You want all of that. And what if you made on your own terms, well, I'm praying for a breakthrough in my job, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. God, I'm going to deal a bargain with you. I'm going to negotiate. God, give me the breakthrough if I put in $10 into this offering plate. Man, God, I mean... $10 is big for me, right? So I'm, I'm giving you big dollars here. And you try to pay off God with your sacrifice of $10. All of you are looking at me as if I'm crazy right now because you know where I'm going with this. Our God is not a genie, and our God cannot be paid off. 
We serve a sovereign God, the creator of the universe. Do you know how great and big God is? Do you know that his wisdom knows no bounds? <laughs> Do you know that he rules the universe and that he gives us enough gravity so that we would not be flung off this planet Earth? Praise the Lord. He cannot be mocked. So if our obedience is predicated on the results that we want, then you're serving not the holy God of Israel, you are serving a genie God. If our obedience is predicated upon the results that you want, then that is not obedience to the God of heaven, it is obedience to the idol that you have set up for yourself. Moses obeyed the commands of God. And God blessed it. God consecrated it and anointed it. The pureness of our obedience to God leaves the results in God's hands. And we obey God's word anyway. Well, that's freedom, isn't it? The results belong to God. We trust him. Some of you are like, well, what if I don't see my kids in heaven pass? There, there's, there's no worry and anxiety in heaven, by the way. Eternal bliss. You trust God with your kids and grandkids and great-grandkids and great-great-grandkids and great-great-great-grandkids. You trust God with them, you obey Him fully because you submit all of them to God. And guess what? You live a carefree, anxiety-free life. You're not biting your nails all the time. Oh no, what's going to happen? but we live free. How pure is our obedience to God this morning? It is predicated upon our faith in Jesus Christ. Not only that, if you love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself, obedience will be such a joy. What now, Lord? I finished the task that you gave me. What's next, Lord? What can I do, Lord? Help me in this. The anointed life that we need to live must be marked with the spirit of the living God. Must be marked with the fruit of the spirit. Must be marked with the seal of the Holy Ghost. Must be marked with the character of Jesus. Do you think Jesus ever worried while he was on this earth? I am so burdened and worried. He obeyed the Father's will. He knew the cup of wrath that he had to drink. He knew the pain that was going to come to him on the cross. And yet he says, but not my will, but yours be done. Isn't that the purest sense of obedience, friends? Not my will. The results don't belong to me. I trust in a sovereign God. Have your way, Lord. But today... I will bring a sacrifice of praise and obedience is better than sacrifice. And therefore, I will obey you. I will trust you. I will love you. And I will continue to look to you even if the results are not the results that I wanted. So how do we deal with spiritual disappointment? Go to the word of God. Verse 16. Moses did everything just as the Lord commanded him. Thank you, Lord. That's the way to break through spiritual disappointment. Go back to the truth of God's word. 